The following operator training video for the Hobart CLE wear washers is a supplement to the instruction manual that came with your dishwasher. If you have any questions concerning operation, please consult your manual. CLE wear washers by Hobart are a semi-automatic rack type dish machine that moves the dish racks from one end of the machine to the other, exposing the wear to progressive wash and rinse zones. The CLE wear washers are available in a medley of optional lengths, sections, and features, which will provide for your specific needs. All CLE wear washers have a microprocessor control module with digital temperature displays. For the purposes of this video, we will be using model CLP-S66E. The following information will apply to all models. A few of the design features include the integrated pump intake screen will keep debris out of the pump. The door activated drain closure automatically seats the standpipe when the door is closed, establishing the correct tank water level. When the drain lever at the front of each tank is lifted, the standpipe is raised, draining the tank. The auto position rinse arms will consistently be properly seated, providing a consistent sanitizing rinse pattern. Auto fill will fill the machine automatically and maintain the proper water level after the door has been closed and the power turned on. The auto timer starts the wash system when the first rack enters and shuts off the pumps and drive motors after the last rack exits. The machine will restart when a rack is slid in or the start key is pressed. The slope screen and lift out basket collect food debris and maintain cleaner wash water. The door interlocks prevent machine operation while an inspection door is open. If a door is open while the machine is operating, the pumps, conveyor, and final rinse automatically turn off. After the door is closed, the machine must be restarted by pressing the start key or by inserting a rack. Other design features and optional equipment are detailed in the operator's manual. The operation of your CLE wear washer is a simple process. Make sure that the dishwasher is clean and that all parts are in place. Install the standpipe and integrated pump intake screen in the pre-wash tank. Install the upper wash arm and the lower wash arm with all end caps. Install the slanted strainer pans and lower the deep collection bucket. Hang all curtains according to the appropriate curtain diagram in the operator's manual. Close all doors to lower the drain standpipe and integrated pump intake screen. To begin filling, press the power button. Note, if your machine is equipped with gas heat, refer to the starting the gas heat dishwasher instructions in the operator's manual. The water temperatures in the tank and the Hobart built-in electric booster heater for the rinse is regulated by solid state thermostats. The control is preset at the factory and no adjustment should be required. The digital display on your wear washer verifies proper water temperature during operation. After the machine has filled, start the pumps by pushing the start key on the keypad or inserting a rack in the machine. The machine will operate only if the tanks have filled to the proper level and all doors are closed. Press the stop key on the keypad if you wish to stop the conveyor, pumps, and final rinse. Pre-scrap dishes thoroughly to remove large food particles and debris. Note, never use steel wool on wear that is to be loaded into the dishwasher. Load dishes into the racks. Do not stack dishes one on top of another as water must have free access to both sides of every dish. Stand plates and dishes up edgewise as shown. Cups, glasses, and bowls should be inverted in open type or compartment type racks. Silverware and other small pieces may be scattered loosely over the bottom of a flat bottom rack. Note, do not attempt to wash large items such as pots, pans, and trays 
without first checking to make sure they will fit through the machine opening. Notice, do not allow foreign objects to enter dishwasher, especially metallic contaminants. When a rack has been loaded, slide it into the machine and start loading another. The operation of the dishwasher is semi-automatic. When a rack enters the machine, the pumps and conveyor automatically start. Each rack moves through the pre-wash, wash and rinse zones, then out onto the clean dish table. The rinse lever is actuated by the dish rack when it is present in the rinse zone and automatically shuts off the final rinse water when no rack is present. Allow dishes to drain and air dry before removing the wear from the rack. The standard conveyor dwell feature will allow you to stop the conveyor in order to wash heavily soiled dishes for a longer time. When the dish rack reaches the wash chamber, push the dwell key on the keypad to stop the conveyor. To start the conveyor again, press conveyor dwell button on the keypad. An overload mechanism will shut off the conveyor drive motor if the racks jam or the load becomes excessive. After the jam is cleared, push the start key on the keypad to restart the dishwasher. All tank temperatures display on the control readout when the machine is in operation. When the wear reaches the rinse zone, the final rinse temperature will display. If the tank is accidentally drained before turning off the power switch, the float controlled low water protector switch will automatically stop the tank heat. When the proper water level is returned, the tank heat will automatically restart. Notice, do not use the low water protection as a power on-off switch. Press the power key on the keypad to turn the machine off when not in use. The dishwasher is equipped with a microprocessor control module to allow greater precision for cleaning your ware, maintaining required tank temperatures, and other advanced functions. Some of these functions are customized to suit the needs of your kitchen operation. All customization is performed through the on-screen menu using the up, down, menu, and start enter keys located on the keypad. Note the parameters can be changed at any time the display is active whether the machine is operating or in idle mode. To enter the parameters menu, press the menu key from the main screen. You will be prompted on screen asking if you wish to exit the menu. Press the up or down key repeatedly until you reach the enter security code screen. Note, the manager code is necessary for entering the parameters menu. If the code is lost or forgotten, it can be reset by Hobart service. Press the enter key to indicate that you want to enter the code. You will now be prompted with security code on the top line and a single digit and three asterisks on the bottom line. Use the up and down keys to change the digit of the security code to the appropriate value. Note, the default code is listed in the operator training manual. The code may be changed, however, the new code should be stored in a safe place. The Hobart warranty does not cover resetting the code. Press the enter key to move to the next digit to the right. Repeat these steps for each digit. After pressing enter on the fourth digit, you will immediately return to the enter security code screen. The letter M will appear in the lower left corner of the display. Press the up or down keys repeatedly until you reach the edit parameter screen. Press the Enter key. Hobart believes that the default settings that leave the factory are suitable for the majority of kitchen operations. However, there are cases where kitchen managers may find the need to change one or more options. The Parameters menu allows these changes. The Parameters menu is used for changing settings such as sanitizing mode, visual alerts editing, changing manager code, editing communication setup, and more. For a complete list, refer to your operator's manual.
Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures before you begin cleaning. There may be multiple circuits. Be sure all circuits are disconnected. The machine must be thoroughly cleaned at the end of each working shift or at least twice a day. Use only products formulated to be safe on stainless steel. Press the power key on the keypad to turn the machine off. Open the doors. Check the upper and lower final rinse nozzles to make sure that they are free of lime and solids. Open the drains by pulling the drain lever or levers up. Remove the wash arms and the wash arm end caps. Push any nozzle obstructions into the wash arms. Then thoroughly flush the wash arms in a sink. Replace the wash arm end caps. Before removing strainer baskets and pans, clean off any scraps from machine walls using a good hose with a spray nozzle. Flush all debris toward the strainers. Clear the dish tables in the dishwasher. Remove all strainer pans and strainer baskets. Empty the contents into a garbage can or disposer. Thoroughly clean pans and baskets in a sink. Notice, do not strike strainer pans or strainer baskets on solid objects to dislodge debris. Clean pump intake strainer. Remove curtains. Thoroughly scrub, rinse, and allow curtains to dry at the end of each day's operation. Thoroughly wash out the interior of the machine with a heavy-duty hose fitted with a squeeze valve and spray nozzle. Remove remaining soil with a cloth or soft brush and mild cleanser. Rinse again with hose. Note, do not allow food soil to accumulate on the tank bottom. Return all strainer pans, strainer baskets, and the standpipe to the proper locations. Install upper wash arms. Rest the rear extension on the rear hanger bracket with the open end of the arm next to the wash pipe. Slide the arm onto the connector pipe and rotate the arm upward to latch it. Insert the lower wash arm straight onto the connector pipe. Adjust so the clamp holds the other end. Swing the front of the arm down until level to fully position it. Leave the doors open and the curtains removed while the machine is not in use. This will allow the interior to air out and dry. Note, OptiRinse nozzles should be replaced if they become clogged or if the spray pattern becomes ineffective. Periodically, lime may build up on the machine. After a set period of operation, the machine's control will display D-Lime Recommend. The set period can be adjusted if your conditions need the number of hours to be reduced or increased. To D-Lime the machine, follow the instructions on the D-Limer chemical container. The D-Lime Recommend display message will not clear itself automatically. To clear the message, enter the manager mode and navigate to the clear D-Lime screen. Clearing the message also resets the D-Lime timer. Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures. There may be multiple circuits. Be sure all circuits are disconnected. When cool, check the vent above dishwasher every six months for obstructions. Periodically, you may run into a problem with the machine. Knowing where possible problems occur is key to solving them. If the dishes are not clean, then check for a cause. Possible reasons include insufficient wash water due to drain obstruction, preventing proper drain closing, missing end plug from wash arm, wash arm nozzle obstruction, Spotted silverware, glasses, and dishes can be caused by improperly loaded racks or incorrect final rinse water temperature. If the machine will not fill or is slow to fill, make sure that the doors are closed. A complete list of troubleshooting symptoms and causes are listed in your operator's manual. If symptoms persist after possible causes have been checked, contact your local Hobart service office. Note. Failure to follow use, 
care and maintenance instructions may void your Hobart warranty. This concludes the operator training video on your Hobart CLE wear wash machine. Contact your local Hobart office for any repairs or adjustments needed on this equipment.